we're we're different, right? We're we're independent. We have no conflict of interest. We are totally unbiased, and and we're we're entirely between the PM and FM community and the janitorial operators. Yes, we're agnostic. Yes. We we have we have no uh, you know assets. We have no equipment. All we have is our technology and our platforms. We use data and mm. data centric solutions, which really is you know tells you a little bit about our acronym. Data centric means we'll do a study, we'll do an assessment, yes. and it can't be manipulated. The right. data, the data is the data. Welcome to the Mastering Property Management Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Sarbit. Join me as we delve into candid conversations with industry experts to uncover their strategies and insights for achieving success in property management. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, let's elevate your property management skills together. Hi, everybody. This is Jared Sarbit with Mastering Property Management. Today, I have the honor and privilege of having Neil LeFang on. Uh, Neil LeFang is the president of DCS Global. Uh, Neil, thank you so much for coming on. I, I really appreciate it. Let's, let's get right into it. Neil, um, tell me a little bit about DCS Global, uh, who you guys are, uh, what yeah. you do, uh, but, but also get into the, you know, some of the key milestones of how you got, got here. Uh, so bring me back, tell me your story, uh, take me back to you know, all the big milestones throughout your career that brought you today to most recently to DCS Global. Yeah. First of all, Jared, thank you so much for inviting me. I, I've heard great things about you. This is the first time we've spent a little bit of time. I know we've kind of communicated a little bit through LinkedIn. Uh, first and foremost, uh, where I am the president of DCS Global, I'm also the father to Olivia, Madeline, and Matthew, my three children. Um, that's the bigger job. That's the bigger responsibility. But they're young adults, and they're doing their own thing. And um, listen, I, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you today and talking about you know, where I've been and, and what I'm doing next. Your, your question was, how did I arrive at DCS Global? Yes. And tell, tell you a little bit about that, perhaps? Perfect. Yeah, yeah please go yeah. into it. Go, yeah, a so, go a little further back, Neil. Take us, take us back. Give us your whole story. Yeah, no, my first 20 years, Jared, I was a property management executive. I had the pleasure of managing the largest office building in Canada. I won a Canadian office building of the year. I won a BOMA International Toby Award for top office building of the year for its size globally. Uh, wonderful experience. I saw my career really moving and developing in property management and, and loved it. Um, you know, very interpersonal. You're at the center of a lot of different relationships. Property management as an industry will contract out more than any other industry. And, and you're at the center of it. And where I was at, at First Canadian Place, uh, which is three and a half million square feet, single site, it's a small town, wow. small town, yeah, yeah, small town. And, yeah. and the property management office, that's the mayor's office. Right? So you, got, <laughs> yeah. you, got, you got waste issues, you got security issues, you have leasing issues. And, and yeah, yeah and, and with 10,000 building occupants, it, 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 it's a small town every single day. Yeah. And yeah, and then I learned a little bit about myself. You know, um, I realized I maybe was a little bit more entrepreneurial. And I got to go chance, I had a chance to do a startup down in Southwestern Ontario for a, a construction and development group that specialized in long-term care homes and retirement homes. Okay. And they kind of said, you know, when shovels aren't in the ground, we'd like to have a company that can generate some revenue. So I started up a third party property management division for them. Mm -hmm. And, and um, along the way, and being in Southwestern Ontario, really, really close to tier two automotive plants, I found there was a need uh, for facility services because there was a lot of tier two stuff opening up. And, and so if, if you timed it correctly and, and you could find the right kind of relationships and, and, and show your pedigree, yeah, I built up a nice little business in tier two automotive doing janitorial and it was very specialized in a manufacturing environment. My, my owners, who were real estate development guys, they're kind of like, well, you know, we're, we never really saw us doing this, but we like what you're doing. I like the diversity. We like the cash flow. We like what's happening. When yeah. shovels aren't in the ground, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're creating something for us. And, and really, <clears throat> that was a great experience for me. And I realized that I had some future in facility services, in janitorial. Um, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. And if you can 
if you can do well and succeed in janitorial, I'm pretty sure you can succeed in, in any type of environment. And, and so I crossed over from property management um, and joined Omni Facility Services Canada. I was approached by uh, two private equity groups out of uh, Boston. Uh, one was called Washington and Congress LLC, and the other it was the oldest private bank in America, uh, Brown Brothers Harriman. Hmm. And they said, Neil, we bought this janitorial company out of bankruptcy. We're doing about $60 million a year in revenue, negative EBITDA. So it really had to reposition the company, you know, reputational damage, reputational stigma. Hmm. I, I, it was, I was so fortunate. I had people that really responded to my style of management, whatever that is, hmm. or my style of engagement. And, and I made a really strong commitment to the people that I inherited. I wanted to keep those people and, and do great things with them. And, and great things happened. So, yeah. you know, we grew, we grew from 60 to 100 million. Wow. Um, yeah. And did that in four years. Incredible. Right. Holy right. cow. Good for yeah. You. Coast water to water, coast to coast yeah. and, and got approached by my largest competitor, uh, a group called uh, a company called group distinction Inc. out of mm -hmm. Quebec, um, and sold. And, and I had the honor and the experience of being a co-founder of a company called GDI. Um, and we took the company public and, and, it goes on from there. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so I, and I, I was fortunate. I, I was able to, um, you know, enjoy an exit and, and, and then travel the world with, with my wife and my kids and got reacquainted with all of them because I've been busy for a number of years and did some consulting and worked with CEOs of different types of companies. At the same time, I went out and got my designation as a, a certified coach practitioner so I can help, CEOs and boards with succession planning and strategy and, mm. and, and those types of things. Um, and along the way, you know, bought and sold a couple of smaller facility uh, service companies. And, and really, I can, if you sort of fast forward a little bit, you know, I was, you know, having known Randy Burke at, at DCS for some 23 years, and we always threatened and plotted that we would try and find a way to work together. Yeah. Um, we, we found, we, we found a common dialogue. We're, we're coming out of the pandemic and things are changing and there is a new normal impacting the property management community, as well as the, the, the janitorial operators, that community. And I said, I, I, I love it. I, I like where you're going. And in fact, I, I want to be part of your team. Um, but I'd like to change it a little bit. I'd like to augment it and I'd like to add some yeah. additional services, yes. you know, from, from an advisory and an audit perspective. And I, I can tell you in the last six months, um, it, it has been just a tremendous experience of activity and growth. Great. Yeah. And, and, and watch for us by the end of the year, we'll be in the UK with, with, with a presence. No kidding. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's and we're, exciting. yeah. Increasingly active, so the engine room's Canada, but yeah. you know, the United States have been really, really, a, you know, a focal point for us, and and we have we do have some large clients already that we've secured down in Florida in particular, and um, we have one of the largest uh, one of the largest um, educational systems in North America, uh, Chicago Public Schools. We audit seven hundred of those schools, wow. and as as I'm diversifying the company with the support of, of Randy, um, I'm able to increase the touch points where we're taking on more and more within the built environment. Yes. So where the, the engine room from DCS was really about janitorial consulting and, and support services, it, it's really the built environment and all the touch points now yeah. within, within the built environment. Right. Holy cow, what an awesome story. Um, and sounds like where you've landed with DCS is right where you need to be. I mean, all your skill sets have, you know, kind of accumulated over the years and this is a perfect, perfect space for you. So I'm sure Randy is super excited, who, who I know well, and I'm sure he's very yeah. excited to have you on the team. Um, that, that's amazing. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, tell me a little bit about, like, what are some of the characteristics, um, you know, your key character traits that you think, you know, I mean, you, you built a business from, you know, you took it from 60 million to 100 million. Um, you've sold companies, you know, you've, done, you've had some incredible success over your career. So how did Neil, like, what are some of those characteristics that, that, that helped you achieve that level of success? 
Yeah, well, two things come to mind. And as simple as it is, I, I share this with my adult children and, and anyone that I've had the honor of mentoring. Um, be adaptable and please listen. Hmm. Please listen carefully. Yes. Because people, yes. people will share their stories with you and they will tell you what they need and they will yes. tell you what help they need from you. And you need to have a balance rather than um, this is what we can do for you. Yes. No, let's, let's understand what you need. So I would, I would suggest adaptability and listening. And, and then I guess, I, I, you know, members of my, my teams that I've built up over the years, they would say, uh, rightly or wrongly, Neil's, a, you know, sort of a, a, an open book, pretty genuine. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I can tell you when I crossed over from property management to, to, to janitorial, you know, one of the first things I did for, and, and again, appreciating, you know, that I have my own theories and my own philosophies. I had, I had a window of time to earn credibility in the janitorial space coming from property management. So I'm now surrounded with people that have been in the janitorial industry for a lot of years. I've got some options. Um, the option I chose was to roll up, roll up my sleeves and, and learn what you do and, and spend time with the key people and, and, you know, the people that, that make the company happen. And even though I, I wrote janitorial specs and I managed janitorial contracts, it was always from the PM side, the property management side. So I had to actually start over and regardless of any kind of credibility earnout I had on the property management side, I was viewed absolutely as a janitorial outlier. I, I mm. you know, and, and, and that was a bold move by, by the owners at the time. And I just rolled up my sleeves and spent time and listened a lot. Yeah. Wow. And it was, it was wonderful because they're wonderful people, right? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Tell me a little yeah. bit about the adaptability component of that. Um, what does that mean exactly? Like, you know, sure. yeah. Define that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and make it, you know, a very personal story. You know, I remember going, you know, going into one of my first board meetings with the private equity guys and the chairman of the private equity company said, you know, um, Neil, this is the first time you've met the guy, these guys and they've flown up from Boston and, and I want you to have a really good meeting. And I'm just about to walk into the boardroom for my first meeting with, with the owners and these people that flew up from Boston. And, and he said, oh, by, the, by the way, Neil, these will probably be the smartest people you'll ever meet. <laughs> yeah, right. Not intimidating so, at all. I'm like, okay, so uh, you know what? Be, be authentic. And so I went in and see here are the pressure points. So, yeah. you know, here are the, the margins, there's downward pressure on the margins. Mm -hmm. we, accept, we accept that and make ourselves a volume based business. Yes. Meaning we accept the lower margin, but go large yes. or we push back and we find a niche mm. and, and tech, you know, usually where it's more technical, it, it, it's a higher margin, you know, right. higher margin, higher, higher EBITDA. And so I had to, you know, share with the board of directors, we need to adapt. We yes. accept, we accept the downward pressure and the further commoditization of our janitorial margins yes. or we develop ourselves differently. Yes and specialize in some areas, but the implication is time. And so that means we either organically grow to get that credibility or we go out and buy some companies in a space where we want to be. Mm. And, and the market doesn't care. They'll give you credibility. They don't care if you organically grew yourself there or if you acquired a company yes. as, as long as long as you sustain that and perform and deliver, you know, you'll, you'll get that, that credibility earn out as I call it. Amazing. And so was a big part of that growth through acquisition then? Um, at, actually, no, uniquely at that point, it wasn't. So I, I will share with you the growth from 60 to 100 yeah. was not. No, we had a predominant market share yeah. uh, with, with uh, retail. You know, we, we were doing a lot of unique facilities. You have to remember, too, like, you know, the, 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 the the, the PM industry has evolved differently than the FM industry. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the facility management space. And a lot of the models were coming over from Europe. Right. And, and so what we found was as FM was sort of um, new soil in, yeah. in Canada and North America, we were kind of plugging into that. So some really, really unique environments. And then, but we did specialize. We had very unique market share. Um, I right. would suggest, you know, 500,000 square foot regional shopping mall was our sweet spot, you know, mm -hmm. and, 
And so we had great market share there. We also changed our language internally. And, and you've been kind enough to share a little bit about with, prior to this, this podcast, you said this is a little bit about me and, and this is the type of business that we, we tend to operate yes. and the types of clients we go after. Well, Jared, there's singles, there's doubles, yeah. there's triples, there's home runs and grand slams. And it, they all matter and they all count. Yes. Right. Just don't get to Q3 and Q4 where you're reliant on the grand slams and the home runs. Right. And so for me, you know, I had a board of directors and then, you know, a publicly traded company. We learned to change our language. We welcomed the smaller opportunities, mm-hmm. different type of relationships. We also went over, went after the large opportunities. But yeah. there's that adaptability again. Yes. A- yes. Very good. Very good. That's, that's super insightful. Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, like uh, going into DCS, like how, how does DCS uh, incorporate data driven assessments and reviews um, in its approach to improving the indoor uh, environmental quality, which I believe DCS uh, coins yeah. with I, IEQ for their clients? Yeah, no, a- absolutely. So we're, we're different, right? We're, we're independent. We have no conflict of interest. We are totally unbiased. And, and we're, we're entirely between the PM and FM community and the janitorial operators. Yes. We're agnostic. Yes. We, we, have, we have no uh, you know, assets, we have no equipment. All we have is our technology and our platforms. We use data and mm-hmm. data-centric solutions, which really is, you know, tells you a little bit about our acronym. Data-centric means we'll do a study, we'll do an assessment, and it can't be manipulated. The right. data, the data is the data. And yes. so we, we come in and again, the engine room was, you know, the, the janitorial audits and RFP project management. But on the, you know, the audit side, it was green and sustainability. It was KPIs. It was visual, visual. Hygiene became a big part of it during, during the pandemic. Yeah. We, we get the results. The results are the results. And, and then we interpret those and we make some recommendations. Mm-hmm. But but we're mindful. We're very mindful of the process. If if we're working with a, a janitorial operator and we've been asked to come in, um, we want them to succeed. We right. we actually want them to succeed. We want them to grow. Um, we want them to get renewal after renewal and be sustainable because we want to elevate the industry. And so, if we're doing audits and we find that maybe there's a few trouble spots, you know, we'd go, hey, Jared. You know, yeah. let's, can we help you? We'll, we'll orient your team a little bit differently. This is the stuff we're looking for. We yeah. want you to succeed, yeah. you know? And so it's yeah. not a gotcha. It's not a gotcha. It's not a wow. It's, it, you know, we want people, we want people to succeed. And, 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 and so, you know, audits are a big part of that. The data is the data. We don't manipulate it. Um, we have to maintain our independence and our unbiased approach. And, Great. and as I said, be agnostic. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I know you're fairly new with uh, DCS. You haven't been around too long, yeah. but yeah. but I imagine you you know some of the some of the big wins that DCS uh, has had over the last you know in the recent uh, few years. Um, so who are some of the big clients that you've helped? Are you able to share um, some some of the clients that you've support DCS has supported over the last few years? Sorry, in terms of uh, my understanding of what DCS has achieved. For, yeah, sorry. From from a, the property management perspective, like who are who are oh, some gosh. of the properties that you have supported? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, okay. Well, in two thousand twenty-three, uh, yeah. DCS did over four thousand audits. Wow. Yeah. In in North America, and that would have been KPI, green sustainability, yeah. visual, you know, cleaning. Yes. Um, and then you know, Aspen Properties, Cadillac Fairview. Yes. Back in the day, it would have been Brookfield Properties, Park Royal. Yeah, um, right. and, 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 and I'm also mindful and respectful of the fact that we also come in sometimes rather anonymously. Um, you know, I, I can share that, you know, we've just picked up on the facility management side. Um, and and this will be our this will be, you know, this the, the museums in Ottawa will be a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. So Canadian Mu- Museum of History. Uh, the Canada War Museum, but we're coming in as the facility management consulting okay. group. So, so it'll be it'll be a Black and Mac or a Beegis. They'll be working within our RFP sort of process. Gotcha. But you know, but we're you know our programs are in thousands of properties across North America. Yes. Um, I would characterize that all the major Oxford, Cadillac, Fairview. 
you know, Brookfield. Um, it goes on and on. And yeah. it's, yeah, and it's a real mix. We're in the, the AAA tower. Yes. We're, we're in the smaller B and C stuff. It comes down to the need of, yeah. of the customer. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if that kind of answers your question a little bit. No, yeah, I know. It absolutely does. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, t- tell me a little bit about um, the clean and safe program that DCS has developed. Um, yeah. How does this program go, go beyond the traditional cleaning methods to ensure workplace hygiene uh, and sure. safety? Sure. That was a really unique experience. So that was a, a uh, that was a file. That was a project where ISSA, this global group, yeah. uh, International Sanitation Supply Association, yeah. uh, International Cleaning Group, partnered with 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 DCS, and it was recognizing that we had to reposition hygiene. Mm. So um, I can tell you that we developed scopes that were specific to hy- hygiene and not necessarily just routine cleaning. Yeah. And today that's in 600 properties across North America. Holy cow. Yeah. Amazing. And, yeah. and what are some of the strategies within clean and safe that, that, uh, that really promotes the hygiene component of it? Yeah. Well, there's multiple layers. So we're going to, we're going to start with an assessment of the contract. Um, we're going to validate and, and challenge our assumptions on the scope of work. We incorporate the audits. The audits are a big part of it. And, and then um, the reporting in terms of recommendations and, and findings. A big part of that will be what we do within the audit space. Okay. You know, what are we auditing and what do those results indicate? So okay. if it's hygiene based, you can anticipate a lot of adenosine triphosphate ATP testing. Right. With associated reports. And of course, you know, we're looking at the, the surface buildup of yes. micro, possible microbial contamination. And we make recommendations based on the results that come back to us. So okay. it's a very it's a very kind of holistic package that comes together. Yes. And at the end, and at the end, you you get your certification. Okay. Uh, you get your building certification program, uh, clean and safe save. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Very very good. Um, can can you share some examples um, of the specific challenges that DCS Global has helped clients overcome in terms of facility maintenance um, and janitorial services within their properties? Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, the PMFM world contracts out more than, yeah. well, definitely property management contracts out more than any other industry. Yeah. And, and so you can imagine how many files you're managing as a property manager. Yeah. yeah. How much time, what's your resource allocation, yes. what, what's your level of knowledge and understanding, and really what are your priorities? Yeah. Uh, you know, so for example, cleaning would be one of the more expensive traditional building cost of operations, but your power, your water, your hydro utilities would be up there as well. Yes. Uh, coincidentally, you know, cleaning would be in no particular order, you know, one of three areas of complaint and concern within the built environment, hmm. you know. And so for us, it's it's a client who says, I, I don't have the resources, the allocation, the focus, the bandwidth. Yeah. Um, I, I like who we're working with, or I don't, but I want to be independent, yes. and I'd like you to be reasonable and fair and, and, and help us with an assessment and a study. Yeah, good. Okay. No, that's really good. There's so much value there, that's for sure. Um, yeah. uh, D- DCS Global, as you, as you mentioned, has worked with some very high-profile uh, venues across yeah. North America. Um, what, are, what are the key factors that have contributed to earning the trust of such esteemed clients? Well, our integrity is everything. So the fact that we are uh, uniquely independent Mm -hmm. and yet at the same time, our market intelligence is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So think about this, for example, we know the pricing patterns from coast to coast. Yes. We know who's, we know who's buying. We know who's selling. We see the activity on a broad scale. So we know, we know the strength of the leadership teams. Mm -hmm. We know the weaknesses of the leadership teams. And, and so if you take a look at it, we are unique in Canada in yeah. terms of bandwidth and the services that we offer. And now we're, we're expanding into the States and, Amazing. and it makes sense given the significance of the costs associated with not only cleaning, but indoor environmental quality. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're proposing will represent the first time that the property management community will have a completely consolidated auditing and assessment platform. And so when we generate, we generate a dashboard and at any given point in time, 
we have taken, you know, their performance categories that they want us to assess and cleaning is always part of it. And right. then there's security and there's waste management and there's carbon footprint and environmental risk. Um, but we, we crunch the data, we do the analysis, we come back and we provide the findings in the dashboard and we make recommendations. I, I would share uh, more and more ESG is becoming relevant. So, you know, if you're if you're an insurance company, a bank, you're publicly traded, you're you're on the clock. You, you have ESG pillars that you need to speak to. Right. So, you know, last week met with a, a very high profile blue chip Canadian, you know, real estate ownership group that self manages all their assets. Yeah. And yet next week or the week after we meet with their ESG committee mm. and we figure out how we can plug in. And so where the engine room historically was the janitorial space for us, it's now the built environment all the different aspects mm -hmm. of the built environment. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. So when you're talking ESG, are you consulting on the, the S and the G as well, or more of yeah. just the, the E? Or, yeah. No, no, absolutely. Well, I mean, you, you can break it down, and, 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 yeah. and we've, we, we're very comfortable in terms of where we fit in. Like, you yes. know, on the environmental side, it, it really is about sustainability and green, and you're, you're in the built environment. It's yeah. typically an environment reliant on mechanical ventilation. Right. You can't, you can't open windows. Right. You're right. And so yeah. what, what's happening? Yeah. What, are, yeah. what are you using? What kind of chemicals? How are they stored? How are they being disposed of? Et cetera, et cetera. You know, on the social side, we want all of the contractors to do well. We want the janitorial contractors to do well. When we're negotiating on their behalf, we want them to get fair and reasonable wages. Yes. So from a social standpoint, we want, you know, we want the janitorial contractor to be healthy financially. If yes. they're not, if they're not, they can't look after their people and they can't look after you as a client. Totally. totally. Uh, absolutely. And we, and we get it. Right. And yeah. so again, uniquely positioned, we, we yeah. know, we know them all. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and on the governance side, Sure. Um, among other things, there needs to be some transparency. There needs to be a, a review. There needs to be a, a formal bidding process. Yes. Uh, companies will say, I, I love you, but I got to go out for tender. Yes. yes. Right. And so Perfect. we kind of match up nicely. We're aligned with all the key pillars on an yeah. ESG front. Fantastic. That's really yeah. good. Um, what, are, what are some of the key strategies um, or best practices that, that property managers can implement to achieve excellence in their uh, facility maintenance um, and janitorial services, um, thereby positioning themselves for BOMA recognition and other? Yeah, ways? yeah, for sure. Well, what's a great question, by the way. And, and what's interesting is that uh, increasingly BOMA is promoting or encouraging the use of an independent outside group to help you go after your awards and certifications. It's, it's kind of like, you know, and not meaning any kind of d disrespect whatsoever, but you know, kids aren't, you know, doing their own report cards for a reason. Right. right? Yeah. So, so Bowman yeah. is saying, we, we, we love what you're doing and we think you're doing it. We yeah. think your voice is louder. If you have an independent group yes. that comes in and helps support what you've done. Yeah. And and so that that area of our business has 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 really taken off um, my own personal experience, having won a Canadian office building of the year uh, as a property manager and asset manager and then international Toby as a property manager and asset manager, um, understanding the criteria, understanding the different aspects of the built environment. You, you absolutely have to know what's going on in your building. You yeah. have to put you have to you need a team to focus on, you know, the undertaking, which is the project, which is the application. Yeah. And, and you need to, um, to talk to your, your tenants and find out what they're doing and how are they contributing. You go to your key contractors. What are you doing and how are you contributing? Yes. And then you have to add the cultural aspect. Not all property management companies are, are created equal. And, you know, some are publicly traded or they're REITs or they're institutional. And so the cultural governance is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And so their balance sheet and their bottom line will mm -hmm. include some things that perhaps another property management company wouldn't consider. And so there are some property management companies by the nature of who they are that will throw a stake in the ground and say, these are issues that are important to us. 
Right. And those are typically your trophy, you know, uh, class A type of environments yes. where the ownership is very, very committed to all aspects of the built environment in terms of mm. proper management, sustainability, you know, uh, social behavior, governance, tenant engagement, uh, good corporate tax paying citizens. Yes. Yes. And so you're able to help these property managers and, and I imagine janitorial companies as well, fast track to get these that you, you have guidelines and checklists and support systems to help them. Yeah. Get these Is that right? A absolutely. And in fact, it, so, you know, well, we, we hear a lot. I mean, you know, we've, you know, Cadillac, Fairview and Trio Vest and, and, you know, a, a number of companies have come to us and they've said, we want to go after the 360. We want to go after the bomb Vest. Yeah. I don't have the time. Yeah. And, we, we, we know you've got the team and you've got the resources and you've got the yeah. bandwidth and, and we'll take it on. Yeah. We've just recently, we've just recently uh, team partnered with a Washington and GTA based uh, group that specializes in engineered solutions. And so now increasingly where we may have been plugging into the BOMA awards, you know, the 360 or, you know, the BOMA best where we may have plugged in more specific to maybe janitorial or green and sustainability. Now we're actually partnered with a group that is able to, you know, assess where they are in terms of power consumption, water consumption, carbon footprint, environmental wow. risk, diversion rate. And what's interesting too, is that, you know, when you take a look at, and of course, you know, we're, ag we're agnostic. And, and so the property manager wants to know how they're doing with some of these contracted yeah. services. And, and it's, you know, we, we propose to be, and we are the, the definitive group that can validate independently all the different aspects of the built environment. Yeah. If you were a property manager today, Jared, and you wanted to know what your waste diversion rate was or mm -hmm. your recycling rate, you'd have to go to the contractor that's doing that service. Right. Okay. Or you can say, look, at, I want to go after an award or a certification. Yes. I, I want to be totally independent. I want to have complete transparency. Yeah. And, and so that's different. That's really, really changed. And that, that's, I think this is one of the reasons why Bulma in particular has kind of said, you know what, let, let's, let's have you partner with an outside group independent yes. group right yeah brilliant. and and I, you know and, and and we maintain our integrity and like i said we're completely agnostic we want the contractors to do well yeah yes. yeah very good thank you um since the covid19 pandemic um, what adjustments or innovations uh have property managers had to make to adapt to the new norms and facil uh, facility maintenance and janitorial services if any Oh, wow. Yeah. So, okay. Pre pandemic, pandemic, post pandemic. Yeah. Pa pandemic was, um, you know, a lot of hygiene theater, right. which, which was, which was necessary. Yeah. You know, because socially we wanted the clean, we wanted to see the cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if I'm in a restaurant or I'm walking around in a building, I want to see cleaners everywhere. I want it cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. So again, operating budgets have been gutted. Absolutely mm -hmm. gutted. We've come mm -hmm. through that three years of unprecedented margin and revenue and profitability for the Jancos. Now they're feeling it. They're, it's interesting, right? So now mm -hmm. they've seen that unprecedented growth and a unique yes. snapshot and point in time called yeah. a pandemic. All of that, all of that has been taken off the table. So yeah. now you're thinking, I've just lost market share. I've just lost margin. I've just lost revenue and profitability. And yeah. so we work with both of those groups. Uh, it, our suggestion is, you know, for example, we have one product called a current contract analysis, a CCA, okay. which, um, it, again, independently, we'll come in and in between the Janco and, and the property management company, we'll do a full analysis and yeah. we'll help renegotiate, help renegotiate a new contract. So far, Jared, 100 percent of our cases where we've done this, yes. we've delivered financial outcomes that the janitorial operator was really happy with as well as the property management company yeah. and we got the janitorial operator a new contract term Perfect. so can you imagine being in year two or year three of a three-year contract yeah so let me ask you if, if you're going out for tender and, yes. and you've just come through the pandemic and your competitors are as hungry as you how concerned yeah. are you 
about going out for RFP. Right. Oh, it's totally, totally. Every, everyone's <laughs> right. on edge. Yeah. So we, right. So don't do it. We'll come in. Yeah. We'll come yeah. in. We'll get you the financial outcomes that you want. Yeah. We'll get you a new term. So your yeah. year two, your year two, or your three of a three-year deal. We get you a new three-year deal. Property right. manager doesn't want to change. They love yeah. Jared. They yeah. love your company. Yes. But yes. governance. But governance. Yes. And my budget's been gutted for three years. I've got yeah. to go out to market. Yeah. We can, we, we, can, we can, you know, take that completely off the table. Plus, really? I could go on and on about our audit programs and yeah. how, you know, it's not about just being clean anymore. It's got to be clean. And yeah. is it safe? And totally different level of awareness and, and yeah. appetite for understanding hygiene. Without no doubt. kidding. No kidding. Did you, did you see um, any uh, appetite for, for finding efficiencies? Um, for example, um, um, you know, we, we had one client that said, well, what if we shut off some of the bathrooms, um, you know, and only, you know, because we had, you know, less people in during COVID, had less right. people in the building, um, you know, less traffic. If we yeah. just shut off, like, you know, 75% of the stalls, and we know yeah. we only have to clean this stall. Um, so are those the kind of things that, that you're looking for? Is that what people are still looking for would you say or is it oh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. We, we have an occupancy credit program mm. and again toronto perhaps uh more than other major markets in canada has been really really slow to get back into the office environment mm. you know people actually love being in the office they just don't like the traffic they don't like the congestion right they don't, they don't like the commute and toronto happens to be one of the worst in the world unfortunately okay. so we, we, so when we come in and, and we do a, a program called an occupancy credit program, we actually analyze the flow of the mm. tenants, the use of yes. the space and the occupancy. So we revisit and re-workload all the stacking plans. Your mm. stacking plan is really a macro assessment of space utilization. Yes. So we can identify areas that can be targeted and you yes. can adjust the service level for sure. Yes. Are there any other um, efficiencies that have really come to the forefront? Um, you, um, centralized garbages is one that comes to my mind, um, you know, that we saw as well as, you know, now, now all the, the people in the offices will bring all their garbage to one garbage and they're recycling to one recycling bin and the general right. company would just take that. Again, cost savings and efficiencies. Um, are there other ones like that that you have seen that, uh, that have been implemented yeah. and successful? Yeah, and it really depends on the nature of the facility, too. So you've got yeah. landfillable waste, and then you have right. other waste that perhaps is regulated a little bit differently. And so you certainly yeah. saw what I would characterize as satellite collection areas, mm. right? And then um, depending on the nature of the waste, you might have a, a, a waste program set, set up specifically for the tenants where they're a little bit more involved, yes. right? And yeah, I think, um, you know, on the waste side, the, the key considerations continue to be the waste diversion. And so right. increasingly, companies, property managers have to be able to demonstrate how much waste they, they're diverting and what is exactly getting landfilled. And, right. and yeah. can you modify that and can you change that? Right. Yeah, no, brilliant. And, and kind of on the same theme, um, are mm -hmm. there any particular technologies or tools that property managers um, should incorporate into their operations to enhance the efficiency, you know, of, of meeting the height, height and cleanliness and safety? Yeah. Expectations? Um, yeah, yeah, that's a great, great question. So I have to tell you, I would say in the last three months, the number of meetings I've had around AI has mm -hmm. been exponential. And so we, we, have a, we have a team partnership with a group uh, out of Chicago, and um, we're going to go public with that fairly soon. We're just, you know, dotting some I's and crossing some T's. And, and, sure. and with them and with their leadership and perseverance, we've actually created an AI platform that will enhance not only the efficiency and the rate of closure for janitorial operators within the built environment, but also for the efficiency and the closure rate for all aspects of your building operations and maintenance. Holy so cow. too hot, too cold, funny smell, you know, garbage didn't get picked up, um, contractor taking too much noise, the, the exit lights are out, on and on. So okay. the AI, the AI we're, and what we've done is we've aligned the AI platform between the, the base building operations and maintenance and the janitorial operators and the 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 it, it, the efficiency and how quickly things are being resolved, hmm. and so of course there are scopes and there are specs and there are things that need to be uploaded. Yes. But listen, 
I, I can tell you, we're going to be all blown away by where AI is going to impact building operations and maintenance and janitorial. Yeah. Wow, very interesting. Um, what about geo tracking as well? Is that something that you're you're seeing, like tracking the the traffic into washrooms, into the doors? Um, like, because once you have that data, you know, we've 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 had conversations with some clients about that. We haven't we haven't used it ourselves as a janitorial company, but we've we've discussed, you know, um, looking at okay, well, what if we just uh, had trigger points? So you know, you had X amount of people, you know, walk in the door, and X amount of people use the washroom. Um, right. That we should be able to over certain amount of time create enough data to say right. that should tr trigger a clean um you uh, know absolutely that's an efficiency yeah. and again more now than ever with the yeah. fact that you know canadian commercial real estate is going to have some pain points for at least another year and a half to two years mm. so you know people will get back to the office but they're not in a hurry and i i think it's incumbent upon both the janitorial operator and the property management groups to be collaborative. Yeah. And if you can use scanning devices, we created one called FactScan, which mm. tracks occupancy patterns in washrooms. We could go so far as to track, you know, if a roll of toilet paper in the third cubicle on the left needs to be changed or needs to be wow. refilled, needs wow. to be refilled. Yeah, okay. so those, those types of things are gonna be really important. I think that yeah. data, because again, data, right? Yes, yes. Data. It's the data that can't be manipulated that dictates, you know, in terms of how you deliver services. And yeah. it's that's never going to go away. It's here for good. Yeah, it's amazing. I, we, yeah. I When I was at the ISSA conference in Vegas, um, we, we there was so many products out there. It's hard to know which one was, you know, they, they all offered something very similar as far as that, that tracking goes, but hard to know which one was the best. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the ones that rise to the top. Uh, over the well, next and you know, years. it's interesting, you know, you're talking about the introduction of layers of technology. Yeah. And that's only going to that's only going to grow and augment. Yeah. It, it's yeah. not like you're going to be taking layers of technology away. You're no. actually just going to be building and building and building where it's going to be in incredibly automated. Yes. And the expectation is that we're all going to be bigger, stronger and faster in how we deliver yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Very good. Um, great. Well, uh, now for the fun question. Um, so if you can, um, if you could, you know, support, uh, consult, you know, any property in the world, what property would that be? Wow. That's, that's a great question. You know, um, I'm a, I love history. I love old historical buildings and structures. And I'm the kind of guy that will envision um, how many conversations went on. And yeah. what were the issues of the day? So for me, you know, I, uh, you know, my 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 interest is the older historical buildings that are maybe two or three hundred years old. Yeah. And, and all the families and all the meetings and all the discussions that have gone on in those. No kidding. Is, yeah. is there anyone specific or just kind of that genre? That genre. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, yeah, love, yeah. I, love, I love them all. Yeah, very cool, very yeah. cool, uh, very good. And then finally, um, if, if there was any book that you could re recommend, um, you know, to property managers because this is a property management podcast, but it might be for them to educate themselves on maybe you know the janitorial world or whatever that may be, mm -hmm. but, uh, or, or it might just be a you know self help and something completely not related. But what book would you yeah. recommend? Well, there's a few that come to mind. And again, I personalize it. So what may I have done in the past that I benefited from? So, yeah. you know, I, I found it was really important to be aware of one's um, style of communication and engagement. So learn, mm. learn, learn about yourself and how you are viewed and how you're perceived in terms of how you communicate. Learn, learn to be adaptable. Uh, listen. 80% of, of sales is listening. Yes. Right? And then on a personal front, one that I've really enjoyed, it's called Ikigay. And Ikigay is the Japanese principle and understanding of how to live a long and prosperous life. And uniquely, that culture has done so. And, and to that end, there is no word in the Japanese language or dictionary that means retire. So, uh. <laughs> so find, a, find a passion. Yeah. Okay. Find a passion if it's your kids or grandkids or charity. Yes. Working in a hospital or working in your garden. Yes. Stay in motion. I love that. You have to always have purpose. Always have purpose. That's so important. You, listen, you're rudderless if you don't have purpose. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the, the stats are scary. You know, I, mm. I, I don't even want to quote the stat, but it was a very scary one that I read that how many men 
you know, pass away after yeah. retirement in the first five years. Like it's quite high. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah no, listen, I, I saw that with my father and, and he lived a long and prosperous life. But once he yeah. retired, he, he changed. He became a different guy. And um, uh, you need to have purpose absolutely every day. And you yeah. are rudderless. Yeah. If yeah. you don't have that. Yeah. That's uh, icky gay. Icky gay. All right. All right. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to look that up. I've never heard that before. That's, yeah. that's pretty neat. You'll that's love it. Neat. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Um, well, um, how can, um, you know, property management companies finding, you know, I, I mean, I mean, it sounds like most know about DCS already, but I, yeah. I, I imagine there's still some that don't. And, you know, if they're looking to go to tender, um, or, or looking for, you know, uh, just consulting and making sure they're getting the metrics or looking to get the certifications, um, you guys can really help with that. So how can they reach out to you? Sure. Oh, well, personally, it's n dot lathang. So n dot l a t h a n g u e at dcsglobal dot c a, or simply go to dcsglobal dot c a, yes. or come visit or come visit me on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Thanks, yeah. Neil. It's so great having you on. So much value for the listeners. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jared. I really appreciate your time today. Likewise. Thanks.